It's my pleasure to introduce to you Valerie Carson. I mentioned that Valerie uh, is our Population Health and Health Equity Program Manager. Valerie joined our department uh, just a little over a year ago, I guess it's been now. Uh, and this was a new position that was created uh, with our department. Uh, and Valerie works across divisions. She serves on our executive team. And uh, her work is really dedicated to advancing uh, health equity, both within our department as well as in the community. Uh, and eliminating health disparities uh, in support of, again, working to advance health equity, move health forward in Johnson County, and advance our work around Public Health 3.0. So uh, before joining our department, Valerie was the Community Planning Director at United Community Services of Johnson County. Uh, she was there for about 13 years, uh, and much of her work focused on social drivers of health, including housing stability, homelessness, and poverty. And uh, Valerie is a child of a 25-year veteran of the U.S. Public Health Service, and she and her son both are here in Shawnee. So, Valerie, welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Can people hear me? Ah, there we go. <laughs> Charlie, thank you for giving me a couple extra minutes. You know I like to talk a little bit longer sometimes. So um, good morning and welcome. We are deeply appreciative that you are joining us here today and we're appreciative of your commitment to the health and well-being of Johnson County. Um, before I get started, I want to clearly state that the following community health assessment uh, findings would not have been possible without the hard work and long hours of many people from the Department of Health and Environment, including multiple staff from the Division of Epidemiology, Community Health, and Health Services, our Academic Health Department partner, the United um, University of Kansas Health System, and our local CHA Council and Public Health Leadership Council, all of which guided, collected, and analyzed both qualitative and quantitative data that you'll be hearing about today. And of course, a huge thank you to the thousands of Johnson County residents who responded to our request for their perspectives and insights about health and well being. And thank you if you are one of those respondents. My portion of today's presentations include a brief overview of the community health assessment and improvement planning process, why we do it, why we focus on social drivers of health and health equity, how the data was collected, and the initial findings of, the, um, of several components of the assessment. This information, along with that that is shared by Elizabeth Lawler, will inform where we go next and why you are critical to focusing this work, identifying priorities and opportunities for action, and building a community-wide response to improve health and well-being in Johnson County and advance health equity. When we talk about the Community Health Assessment and Improvement Plan, which I'd like to say we affectionately call the CHA when we talk about the Community Health Assessment and the CHIP, when we're talking about the improvement planning and implementation phase, it is important to understand that the process is an iterative one, that it is always ongoing. We formally assess the community every three to five years, but we need to continually reflect and monitor the steps throughout that process to assess if we are effectively moving forward this community's goals. In 2023, we shifted from a three to a five year cycle for the upcoming 2025 to 2029 CHIP, reflecting our commitment to addressing health inequities and the factors that create or sustain them, those upstream drivers of health that Charlie talked about earlier. To bring about change in those factors will require changes to systems, policies, and environments that are almost always certainly outside the immediate scope of the Department of Health and Environment's influence. And so change will require strong and diverse partnerships across this community. Change requires a deep level of trust and shared understanding among collaborators from multiple sectors, and it takes time. 
We hope with the additional years to focus on shared priorities and goals together in this upcoming CHIP, that the community will see progress and build greater trust and a deeper commitment to an optimal health for everyone who lives here. When DHE talks about community today for the assessment process component, we are talking specifically about those who live in Johnson County. And similarly, when we collected both qualitative and quantitative data, it is limited to those who identify as Johnson County residents. With both old and new partners and assuring that community members disproportionately impacted by factors that bring about poor health outcomes, making sure they are at this table, we will work together in 2024 to understand the data, the social drivers of health impacting some more than others, and prioritize which issues are most important and where there is opportunity to impact the Johnson County community. As priority areas of focus are set by community members, goals and the best strategies and actions to address them and who else needs to be at the table will be identified in order to bring about change and put that into motion. In early 2023, DHE staff went out into the community and in partnership with local organizations and civic groups, conducted focus groups with members of the community who identified as part of a group that experienced health disparities. We wanted to assure that their perspectives and experiences were reflected in our CHA survey. With a common script for all focus groups, we asked what assets and what barriers were here for in Johnson County to help in well-being. Most often, when community members are asked about what impacts their health, they often pivot to health care, which is a critical piece of the puzzle. But health care is often down the road when we are potentially already not healthy. Health begins, is formed and shaped early in our lives, within our families, our schools and workplaces, on our playgrounds and parks, and in the air we breathe and the water we drink. Health begins where we live, learn, work, and play. And scientists have found that the conditions in which we live and work have an enormous impact on our health long before we might ever connect to a healthcare system. If we reframe the factors that make up our health and well being to those that are influenced by where we live, learn, work, and play, then we expand both where and how, as a community of multiple systems, we can intervene to improve health now and in the future. In this graphic, the factors that impact our health are visually represented. And what struck me the first time that I saw this and other graphics like it was the proportion of my health that was influenced by factors outside of my immediate control or choice. This was especially true when considering how much of the foundation of our health and well being is being laid in our childhood and youth. We do not control or choose where we are born or who we are born to. What our household's income is are our educational opportunities. What kinds, if any, healthcare resources are available to us? Whether our neighborhood is safe or filled with high levels of pollutants or lacks parks and recreation. Whether our parents or caregivers have access to household sustaining jobs with incomes that can stably meet our needs. Yet all of those factors ultimately contributed to my health. Different organizations represent a different number of categories or what I like to call buckets of those drivers or determinants of health. Some have four, some have five or six, but all of them recognize that there are factors impacting our individual and collective health and well-being that are beyond our immediate control or relationship to choice. Things such as economic opportunity, educational quality and access, 
civic engagement and cultural associations, environmental contaminants or constraints in one's physical environment, access to affordable, healthy food options. All these factors, these social drivers of health, together make up what goes into our health in addition to our personal health behaviors, impacting both current and future health risks and outcomes, including life expectancy and mortality. In addition, personal health behaviors are also strongly influenced by these broader drivers in our immediate environment, especially those that are related to access and opportunity. As a result, the community-wide survey questions and the quantitative data collected focused on social drivers of health that together either support or act as barriers to our health and well-being as a population. Throughout all the work of assessing and planning to improve health is DHE's work and commitment to advancing health equity that this community is one where all residents have a fair and just opportunity to be to achieve good health and well-being. And equity is different than equality and it leads to different outcomes. The following slides are one way to visualize different, different terms related to accessing opportunities that might support health and well-being based on Shel Silverstein's classic, The Giving Tree. So let's say that the tree is representative of our community and our community systems, policies, and environments. And the fruit of that tree are the opportunities and positive drivers of health and well being. One thing you notice is that before the children have even started to interact with the tree, that the tree is already bent in one, to one side and more heavily laden with fruit opportunities on one side versus the other. As a result, when the fruit drops, those on one side of the tree are more likely to be beneficiaries of that fruit. There is unequal access. But what if, as a community, what if as a community, we wanted to promote access to opportunities so that all of our residents could thrive, but in a way that was equal across all of our residents? Well then, let's give everyone the same ladder and picking bag, and wouldn't that be a fair response to try to improve access to opportunities? Both children in this picture have climbed the ladders and both have their bags and their arms outstretched, yet one is clearly able to access opportunities while the other is still without. This is not fair. An equitable intervention looks at the tree and where the child is standing and provides the size and type of ladder that enables all around the tree to access opportunities. In order to achieve health equity in Johnson County, we must recognize that community members are placed all around the tree of opportunity. And that tree, our systems, policies, and environments are not equally accessible to all of our residents in the same way. Obstacles to health that disproportionately impact some people more than others, such as poverty, discrimination, lack of power, lack of access to good jobs with fair pay, quality education and housing, unsafe environments and limited healthcare must be eliminated in order to achieve health equity. And it requires the elimination of health inequities, which are differences in population health status and mortality rates that are systemic, patterned, unjust, and actionable, as opposed to random or caused by the person who becomes ill. But what if instead of modifying and personalizing the intervention, to improve access and assure abundant opportunities for each child, we could instead create a community in which the tree, the systems, policies, and environments that support full health and well being, and thus a thriving community for all, 
would offer equal access to supports and abundant opportunities for its residents. For a community to fully thrive, we ultimately need to work towards justice. But before we can get there, we need to understand where we are now, which is where the community health assessment process comes in. In 2023, multiple strategies were used to describe and understand Johnson County's population and the factors that impact health and well being here. These included scripted focus groups and one on one interviews with residents who identified as part of a group that experienced health disparities and inequities in the spring of 2023. Community wide surveying which asked about the factors residents thought were most important to health and well-being and whether or not those factors existed for all Johnson County residents. The 23 different statements that were used in the assessment were based on those five social drivers of health categories we talked about earlier, um, reflecting where we live, learn, work, and play. Secondary data was collected from state and national sources to describe health, socioeconomic, environmental, and quality of life outcomes, in addition to exploring which populations experience inequities across those same outcomes. Through data, we sought to understand how systems might influence those outcomes. DHE conducted the 2023 Community-Wide Community Health Assessment Survey in both English and Spanish in hard copy and online formats and disseminated it through social media, hard copy and online press materials and through our partners throughout Johnson County community. If you are one of those partners out there, we thank you for helping us get that information out. Participants were asked to two things, to rate their level of agreement with and importance of 23 different statements reflecting social drivers of health, in addition to sharing their demographic and zip code information for a deeper analysis. In the corner of the next couple slides, there is a QR code that will take you to a PDF of that two page survey, if you would like it for your reference to go back and go, oh, these were the questions that were asked. We recognize that this was a convenient survey, but we made intentional efforts to reach out to populations in Johnson County who are often underrepresented in surveys and or who have historically experienced poor health outcomes to make sure to incorporate their perspectives in our analysis. So as a brief overview of who did respond to the community health assessment, most respondents identified themselves as female, about 70%, which is fairly common in surveys. <laughs> um, one in six identified themselves as Hispanic or Latino. When asked about race, four out of five identified as white, non, as white, excuse me, um, followed by 5% as black or African American. English was the most reported primary language with 87% um, speaking English in the home, followed by Spanish. Household income, 44% lived in households that made $90,000 or more. Two thirds of our respondents identified that they owned their own home and about one in four identified as renters. The median household size was two. More than two thirds of respondents reported either a bachelor's degree or a postgraduate degree for their level of education, which was slightly higher or more educated than the general Johnson County population. And one in six identified as having a disability. So if you remember, see the CHAW survey for the full list, we asked survey respondents to make two different assessments about 23 different statements. Let's review what we asked and early overall findings. So first, for each statement listed, respondents were asked on a scale of one to five, with one being strongly disagree to five being strongly agree, 
How strongly do you agree with this statement? Following their rating of agreement, respondents were asked for that same statement on a scale of one to five, with one being not important at all and five being extremely important. How important is this issue to the health and well being of Johnson County? So that sounds a little nebulous right now. So let's take an example to try to make that a little more real. One of the 23 statements was affordable housing is available for all stages of life. First, people were asked, how strongly do you agree with the statement affordable housing is available for all stages of life? Um, I'm guessing you might have an idea of why we asked that, as this was one of the statements that respondents overall most disagreed with. But secondly, respondents were asked for that very same statement, how important is this to the health and well-being of Johnson County, with importance ranging again from not important at all to extremely important. What you see here is the statements where that total respondents were most likely to rate as very or extremely important to health and well-being, where three out of four respondents or more rated these as very or extremely important. You can find this chart on page six of your workbook if that's easier for you to read. The top 10 across all survey respondents pulled predominantly from three different areas of the social drivers of health. Economic stability, healthcare access and quality, and social and community context. In order to explore whether those top 10 factors most likely to be rated as very or extremely important to Johnson County's health and well being for the overall sample was shared by subgroups within Johnson County, we looked to those who experience health disparities due to identity or age. What might we learn from different perspectives on what most contributes to their health and well being? So we dug into the responses of those who identified as Hispanic or Latino, as Black or African American, whose household income and size placed them in a low income household, anything under 200% of the federal poverty level, and those who shared that their age was 65 years or older. And we wanted to see how and if those subgroups looked different than the entire sample. The first thing we found is that three factors in the overall top 10 were in all four subgroups top 10 lists. People keep and find, find and keep jobs that pay well enough. Community members are treated fairly and respectfully and that the criminal justice system is fair for all. Secondly, an additional five factors in the overall top 10 were in three out of four of those subgroups top 10 list. Treatment for mental health was affordable. Medical care and preventive screenings are available. Healthy foods are affordable. Laws and policies are fairly applied to all people. And people have access to health insurance within their budget. Only one factor, the walkability and wheelability of our neighborhoods rose to the top of three out of four of those subgroups in their top 10, but were not at all represented in the top 10 overall list. But three out of the four groups we did a deeper dive into did identify factors that were unique to their group, things that they prioritized as very or extremely important to health and well being. Those who identified their ethnicity as Hispanic or Latino placed local K through 12 schools meeting the diverse needs of their students and community members having strong and social, strong social networks that support their well being in their top 10 of importance. 
Those who identified their race as Black or African American elevated neighborhoods being racially diverse, Johnson County being welcoming to all people, and people being mostly free from chronic stress or constant worry in their top 10. And finally, among those who shared they were 65 years of age or older, neighbors trust and help each other in our community was unique to their top 10. Across multiple subgroups making up five to 20% of the total responses, there is a strong consensus with the total set of responses around which issues are most important to Johnson County's health and well being. Those identified as very or extremely important to health and well being. But this does not diminish the unique factors different groups identified. And areas of both consensus and those of uniqueness may inform how best to address critical gaps in opportunity to be healthy as in this community. We can together hold similar values and beliefs about what is most important to health and well being while simultaneously bringing disparate experiences and levels of access of opportunity to the table. And there is truth and validity in each of these perspectives. But just looking at the importance of a factor to health and well-being is an insufficient reason for us to focus on it for our community health improvement plan. As perhaps community members say, yes, that is extremely important, but we do a really good job of that. What's interesting where there is an opportunity to make a big difference in residents' health is in exploring the intersection of where factors are rated as high in importance, but respondents indicate that the statements are not necessarily descriptive of Johnson County. My colleague Elizabeth will be talking more about that here in a moment. In your workbooks today, we've highlighted several data points that reflect many of the top 10 in importance priorities by those who responded to the CHA survey. DHT acknowledges that many in this community and in the Kansas City region are working diligently to advance health equity and bring about change and justice, often focusing on key factors or specific drivers of health. Local philanthropy, community planning nonprofits, faith communities, and other departments of this county are among those. As together we launch the planning process for Johnson County's next CHIP, we hope to come alongside others in this work. And as guided or directed by the input of community members around what the CHIP should be focused on, in 2025 to 2029 to either fill in additional gaps or amplify, support, or expand existing work. Downstairs during the break, posters are on the wall that mirror the data in your workbooks. On each poster is space to share about organizations and people that you are currently working on these issues. We encourage you to write on the posters and share what organizations and community members you know of that are working on these issues, both to raise awareness and raise up their work and to remind us of the many partners and potential collaborators we have in this work. 